Hi, my name is Nathan, and today we're going to do a comic book review of Chicken Devil, issue number one, brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. Now, I don't know how you guys are going to feel about a comic book named Chicken Devil, but just the title itself, and you're not supposed to judge a comic by its cover, that's what they say, but just reading the cover, I judge and I decided to read. We start off with Eagle Rock, California and Mitchell Moss's home. Mitchell Moss is just a simple man. The simple guy getting some simple coffee together with the wife and two kids. His son is complaining about him, but he wants French toast sticks in the morning. You promised me, Dad. His wife is telling him, Mitch, you need to find time to plan our vacation. And his daughter, Sabrina, talks about, Dad, you promised I can go to... Actually, joking. His daughter is not named Sabrina. Her name is Hannah. Her friend Sabrina got them tickets for Coachella. And Hannah tells her dad, Mitch, you promised I can go to Coachella. And he starts off with, you ever have one of those days that just start off normal, you know, for you, and suddenly it took a turn into what the F? Well, he explains that. So we get into a little bit of his routine. His family is just bitching at him, and this guy is just taking it in, and he's handling the bitchiness one by one. So with his son Christian, I said, I'll take you out for French toast if you got out by seven, but you didn't. Hannah, his daughter, I doubt I promised you you could go to Coachella because you're 15, doubt it, handles her. And he handles his wife beautifully by saying, Denise, I promise when I get home, I'll do, I'll work on getting those tickets and planning that vacation. They, and they all have their reaction and Mitch's phone rings and he gets a frantic call from Antonio, his business partner, and it is not good. It's like, Mitch, you need to meet me at Glendo right away. I had no time to explain. Drop your plans, F your plans, cut, meet me right away. And his wife was like, hey, baby, look, I told you last night I had to leave early. So you got to drop off the kids. And everyone scatters away. His head is down in defeat before it looks like he even took his first sip of coffee. And his son's like, well, hey, can we get fresh toast ticks on the way? Kind of cool humor. I, I dig that. You know, so in it. In Glendale, Mitch meets Antonio. He's just in a frantic state of mind. The warehouse that they store all their, their pollo, their chicken, their burst, and their burnt mascot costumes. Well, this is before the fire went down. Mitch is talking about, dude, like, yeah, I'm in deep shit. And Mitch asks Antonio, dude, why didn't you tell me about this fire earlier? Well, because I put it out, bro. So you mean to tell me if this fire was still going on, you would have looped me in then? So now they're going into, well, it's your fryers, it's the, <laughs> it's the, the real problem is, is these pressure fires, they're the problems, and Mitch is like, I got it because they're proprietary for the chicken, and it's kind of funny how they're arguing about chicken and the fryers, and why you hire someone to fix them when they're my specialty fryers, but there's a real issue to this, there's a real issue to this, and now these rusted monsters, to vodka. Okay, I'm done. If you see the radiant black issue, then you get the you get the reference there. But Antonio was talking about, I'm, let's take a yacht, let's go on a vacation, long long trip. I'm telling you, bro, it's not making any sense. But when these Russian mobsters show up, it is not good. So now it looks like the head boss is coming in, and these guys are going to work on Antonio and Mitch. And then the the right hand man is like, how many times I have to tell you guys, don't get started until the boss gets here. Really disappointing. They go around, they search, they search around the warehouse, and they look at the chicken mix, and and Mitch is clearly like unaware of what's going on. He's like, really, you guys are doing all this just for my secret recipe chicken mix? Seriously, it's just twelve herbs and spices. Are, is that what you're here for? And then it turns out when the henchman opens up the can or the tub. It's heroin, and now his friend is into some stuff. And it's like, what are you guys doing smuggling drugs in buckets? And it's like, well, you know, it was, it was good in Breaking Bad. That's what Mitch says. And the guy clops him over the head like that was, they were smuggling meth, not heroin in Breaking Bad. They get interrogated, and then the head Russian monster is like, okay, enough of the games. It seems like, Mitch, you do not know what's going on here. So let me talk to your partner here. So let me run this down to make sure it makes sense. You're gonna light up this portion of the warehouse, call a third party, call it an accident, pay back my costs, make a nice profit for yourself, and then he shoots his partner in the kneecap, which that's got to be the most painful place to get shot at. Now we get to know that Antonio owes the Russian mob two million bucks. Even though your partner clearly messed up, he's like, we don't have that kind of cash, but we can get, oh no, no, cor correction, we will get it. Okay, you better because that's too many bucks on the line here. So Mitch zooms down the 405 freeway and for any of you guys who live in California or have been to LA, you know zooming down the 405 freeway like that, rare, absolute rare. 
and his family is going into absolute pandemonium. Like, what is up? Like, you're driving like a jerk, dude. Well, you kids are getting older. We're gonna go on vacation. Don't ask me any questions. And the daughter and the son are just going into absolute pandemonium, and the wife is acting like this is sus. And all this pressure is amounting on Mitch, and understandably so. This is just a regular guy with no background. He just makes really good chicken. Now he's stuck in the pickle. Actually, pickle and fried chicken might sound good, though. So he gets to the port of Marina Del Rey. He tells the kids, no phones. Give me your phones. It's a vacation. Get on the yacht. And it's like, aren't you coming with this? I am, but I got to take something. I got to take care of that thing at the Culver shop. You know, so he owns chicken franchises throughout L.A. Uh, Eagle Rock, Culver, and I forgot a couple other cities in L.A., but it's multiple franchises. So he gets in the car. He notices that he has 47 unknown phone calls missed from... You might, well, you might as well assume it's the Russian mom. And he's like, F me, this sucks. And then, kaboom! The boat explodes with his families on it. And this is when the book takes a turn for, I mean, for worse. I mean, in order for a regular guy to become chicken devil and, and some kind of vigilante, he has to act like he has nothing to lose. At this point, he has nothing to lose. So now he gets interrogated like in, by two detectives, Detective Mick Conway and Detective Noemi Taylor. And like, it makes no sense with this guy. He says he's found me on a cruise. He books himself on, he sends on the boat. He doesn't get on and the boat explodes. I don't know, man, this guy is some kind of bomber and what? And Detective McConway's like, well, his chicken is the bomb. I mean, it's like a proprietary pressure fryer. You know, what the heck does that have to do with anything? But I, I dig the humor in this and the, and the irreverence. So he's crying, and obviously, I mean, it's gotta be an emotional tear when you watch your family get exploded up like that. And he goes to his chicken joint in East Hollywood location, you know, locks himself up in the chicken truck. I guess when you're going through that kind of emotion, it's just, you, nothing's going to make sense at this point. So Antonio calls him and frantic, is like, hey man, it wasn't me, I swear, believe me, but I was supposed to be on that boat too. And Mitch is like, but you weren't, Antonio. And Antonio's like, well, neither were you, Mitch, and thank God, now we can take care of this. Oh, you, you, yes, you have to deal with the situation at hand, but that just sounds kind of messed up and odd, don't you think? And then Antonio tells him, look, I need you to do something for me, I need you to go to the gym, in my locker, 14B, That's a, it's the combination of my birthday. I can't tell you what's in there, but what if, But what's in there, it'll take care of this whole thing. It'll turn our whole life around. We will stop being on the run, you know? And Mitch is like, what the? I, I just experienced, oh, okay, what, you know, you know, I can use some kind of normalcy here. So now he's driving down to the gym. His emotions are running high, brain's running on flames, emotional flashback. It's like all this emotions running high on him about his family and how Antonio literally messed up his life. Now he visits his mom in the Central California Women's Correctional Facility. I like this dialogue. This dialogue right there to me was worth the purchase of the comic right itself. So he's asking her like, like, what would you do in this situation? And she's like, oh, oh my God, I raised a, <laughs> what kind of son did I raise, you know? And he fills his mom in on what's going on. And she's like, well, thing is, what people want nothing to lose is they have nothing to lose. That's why you don't mess with lifers. And, it, it, I don't know if it's kind of unleashing the inner <laughs> chicken devil, if you will, inside of him. So it's like, what's the real question? What you, what leverage do you have? What do you stand to lose? And then he's asking his mom, well, how did you live after dealing with Bubba after you stabbed him for? Before he can say the word four times, she's like, I did not. They record the conversation here. Don't do that because I got an appeal going on. What kind of son? What, what's wrong with you? Plus the, the POS got what he deserved. But hey. I didn't do it. This is a funny moment when he gets to the gym and he just walks in and he wants to make sure he's not followed. So to do that, with this lack of criminal experience, he puts on a chicken devil mask and just walks in like, hey, it's cool. Hey, the towel's in the locker room, watch your step. Just mop the floor, buddy. And it's just like this brother didn't even notice it anyway. I got to leave a little meat on the bone with you guys for this issue in case you did decide to get the comic. Link in description, by the way. Chicken Devil issue number one from Aftershock Comics is full of violence, high lunacy, it's, it's good illustration, and a plot that's just wild enough to pull you in for the long words. In other words, it's legit. I dig the freaking book. I think it's Breaking Bad mixed with um, The Big Lebowski. It's very self-aware. It's just an awesome book. I mean, I literally w read this book with no context, none of that, just saw the cover, Pretty good looking cover in my opinion, and it's just 
Yeah, it's dark comedy at its best. It's it's edgy, it's over the top, it's self-aware of what it is, and it just puts this man in situations where he's gonna take you to hell, back, and hell again. And I'm curious to see how he's gonna, you know, deal with this situation with two million bucks, and all you know how to do is make some really good chicken. You cannot gluck gluck 9,000 your way out of this thing. Or, anyways, I'll stop with that. With that being said, Chicken Devil, issue number one. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. And also, if you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Don't be shy and don't be stingy. I rated comics to do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.